you've been looking at Fox and how they've been covering the handshake in 2019 differently. <laughs> the, the coverage of Trump and Kim yes. versus the coverage in the past when former President Barack Obama uh, would be willing to reach out to some rogue states or autocratic regimes. The hypocrisy burns. This, this is a video from Now This News showing some of the examples. Obama would personally negotiate with leaders of terrorist nations like Iran and North Korea without preconditions. Wow, the world will probably be a little bit safer. The media should be giving President Trump credit for that. I'm not sure there's any real discussing issues with Kim Jong-un. He may be the one president who would actually do this, who would go meet with the North Korean leader. Look, it's a bad idea for the president to speak to Kim Jong-un. Why wait till the end of May? Let's do this by the end of March. The current president truly believes that he's the chosen one cannot deal with criticism. We are really in danger of living in a sort of pretty little dream world where Barack Obama thinks the power of his personality is going to have this incredible transformative impact on these crazy Kate, men Kate, all over the President Trump made the decision himself to meet face to face with Kim Jong Un. This guy has a very unique quality of leadership. He is so charming. He can deal with people. He can get along with people. I think that this will only work out well. And all those examples so are from last year, Brooke. It's, it's continuing today. It's continuing in these days uh, with this most recent made-for-TV photo op. I think the point is uh, you mash it up together. It looks especially bad for Fox. But on a daily basis, some of these talk shows, this is why it sounds like propaganda. Yeah. This is why it sounds like something out in North Korea because it is so dependent on who's in charge and what party they're in. It's unfortunate we don't see more consistency from some of those commentators. If this were a Democrat stepping foot in North Korea, he or she would be excoriated. 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 You said the word. Kate, um, speaking of overseas trips and the Trump family, we know that, you know, Melania Trump skipped out on, on going to Japan for the G20 or, or the, the following bit to Seoul. But who did tag along was first daughter Ivanka Trump. And much is being made about exactly how, how much of a presence she had. Yeah, I mean, this is such an interesting role again, Brooke. We've talked about this, this unprecedented first daughter, but senior advisor. Uh, her portfolio certainly covers many of the things that were discussed, uh, women's empowerment, uh, women's economic development, business development, but sort of the foreign policy aspect uh, had people scratching their heads. This is Ivanka Trump sort of asserting her way in here. I think if the first lady had been there, we wouldn't see her in so many photo ops. Um, but it's that question, that fine line of the, the daughter versus the advisor and which leads. And in this, she's taken some heat for, um, you know, just how how uh, much presence she had on this trip. And again, if you thought about what would Fox say, what would the Sean Hannity's of the world right. say if Chelsea Same. Clinton had been old enough to go with her father on presidential trips, uh, or if uh, Mich uh, Malia and Sasha had been old enough to be on these trips, we think we all know what the reaction would have been from right-wing media. It's, you know, the hypocrisy burns. Hypocritical. Yeah. While the president's visit with Kim Jong-un certainly caught some of his own staff off guard, we're learning about a chaotic episode behind the scenes involving the new White House press secretary, Stephanie Grisham. She was physically bruised after getting into the scuffle with North Korean security. Watch. Kate, I know you've just been in touch with Stephanie. Um, did she say how she's doing? And, and what exactly happened? We communicated briefly. She, I asked how she was doing. She says she's fine. She's not making a big deal about this. But, you know, you can see by that video, clearly uh, it seemed as though the, the Korean... The North Koreans were trying to block access to the U.S. press from getting some pictures as the president went to have this historic moment um, at the DMZ. And, and Stephanie Grisham is uh, a pretty tough lady. I've dealt with her quite a bit over the past two and a half years covering the first lady. Um, she's not someone to tangle with. And I think this is demonstrative of her uh, commitment. A lot of the press know her from campaign season two, more than two years ago, when she was a press wrangler on the Trump campaign. Um, they know that she's, she's pretty fierce and she's not somebody you want to mess around with and she was trying to help the press get the shot so in trying to help the press get the shot Brian you yeah. know in, on, on the one hand you, you know you, you give the woman a little credit for essentially body checking this North Korean security guard in order for the US press to get in to, to, get, to, in. to get to get the pictures yeah. but on the other hand you say what well I, I think this is called 
getting started in a new job on the right foot. She did two things that were really important uh, on, during this trip to Asia. Number one, when President Trump said, okay, who do you want me to call on, Stephanie? She said, you're the boss, you decide, <laughs> right? So she knows who's the boss. Uh, she knows the president believes he's his own best press person and he, she defers to him. Mm -hmm. But number two, this incident was really significant. She, she was showing that she understands the, the importance of access for the press, having cameras in the room. So it's not just North Korean cameras in the room. She made sure American cameras mm -hmm. were in the room as well. Mm -hmm. I think she deserves a lot of credit for that. Now, going forward, will she restore camera uh, on-camera briefings? Uh, will she help try to reduce the amount of lying and nonsense that comes out of the White House? Count me skeptical. Again, President Trump thinks he's his own best press person, but I thought this was a really important, strong start and a break maybe from some of the, the troubling behavior we've seen in the past. Yeah. Look, Sean Spicer's first weekend was characterized by lying about crowd size. Right. So good on Stephanie Grisham for doing this, trying to help the press get inside.